So Father Fox, he was known pretty much throughout the U.S. as the Fatima priest. I met him, we were doing some construction projects because that's what my real job is. Father was one of those type of people that he kind of demanded you do it. <laughs> so what do you think your most important contribution to the apostolate has been since you have taken over as the president? Hello everyone and welcome to this first Creator Spotlight. So we're having on a previous podcast guest, John C. Price. He is the current president of the Fatima Family Apostolate. So John, we're going to be taking a look at your apostolate. So tell us, how did you get involved with this apostolate? How I got involved was kind of a neat situation for me. And uh, But first, I'll tell you about how it originated. So Father Fox, Father Robert J. Fox is his name. He was a Catholic priest. He was based out of South Dakota. He was known pretty much throughout the U.S. as the Fatima priest. And he started the Fatima family apostolate. And he started in 1986. And what really, I think, what intrigued him to start the apostolate was with the youth at first. He, he seen the need to teach the youth the message of Fatima, praying the rosary, and uh, doing the first five Saturdays, and everything along with the Fatima message. So he would take, uh, I think it was like 125 youth, boys and girls, separate groups, each year for several years, to Fatima to teach them about the message, to go through and show them the sites and everything like that. And actually, a lot of those have became religious priests, religious brothers, uh, religious sisters. So it's a, it was a very uh, fruitful, fruitful endeavor. And so he started really seeing that after the dealing with the youth, he realized that the family was an issue. You know, there's a lot of family problems out there as we have today. We still have those issues. Mm -hmm. But with the message of Fatima, we can help families with their spiritual life by praying the rosary together as a family by doing the first five Saturdays together as a family and really living out this message to the fullest. That's how we got started in 1986. We're still going. Uh, things have changed a lot, of course. Father passed away in uh, 2009 on Thanksgiving Day. Um, and so I got involved before that, of course. So I met him in 2003. He moved to Alabama. When a priest is 75, they put in for their retirement. Father moved to Alabama, came here by the Shrine of the Blessed Sacrament, which was built by Mother Angelica. He would do the uh, the he would do the mass at noon, and he lived right down the road here. Um, I met him. We were doing some construction projects because that's what my real job is: construction and real estate. So I was doing yeah, I was I'm doing an advertisement here. <laughs> I was doing that, and uh, so I started talking to him more and more. He said, why don't you come visit me? So I came and would come visit. We would talk, and uh, so that's how I first got involved with him. That was uh, just being there, you know, and talking with him. Now, officially getting involved was in 2007 when I became the vice president of the Fatima Family Apostolate, so... So that's, that's how it all started. Then when he passed away, of course, I became the president. Um, he asked me to do it. Uh, you know, it's, it's such a difficult thing sometimes to make choices and decisions. Father was one of those type of people that he kind of demanded you do it <laughs> uh, in a sense that you're the guy, you know, Our Lady needs you, you know, that kind of uh, attitude towards it. Yeah, and I, it was something I wanted to do, you know, it was something that I really wanted to do. And uh, it just here I am and here we are. Mm -hmm. So what do you think your most important contribution to the apostolate has been since you have taken over as the president? Wow, you're asking some tough questions today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know. If you'd asked me this question three or four years ago, I'd probably said a different, I'd probably have a different answer, but being older and being involved in it longer. So in the beginning, you kind of, I made some bad decisions, you know, I made some bad choices, 
it wasn't like, you know, immorally or financial or whatever. It wasn't like that. It was just, how can I get this thing to grow? How can we get the message to the people uh, better? And so you tried things, you keep trying things, you keep trying things. And I think one of my fault, and you know, I, I, my, I went to college two years for management. So management is kind of my thing. I was mm -hmm. in, in a grocery business, I was a store manager and uh, I've owned my own businesses. But a Catholic organization is probably the toughest thing that I've ever had to deal with as far as growing, as far as uh, getting out there and getting your message out. And I think one of the things that I look back as my biggest failure in the beginning was not letting more people get involved. You know, I was trying to protect Father Fox. I was trying to protect his image. I was trying to protect my image and trying to be something that I wasn't in the beginning. And it's just very difficult, you know, so you go through those growing phases. So I think really, um, my biggest contribution is learning the message better, um, learning the message of Fatima so that I can get on here and speak with you. Or I wrote three books. I have a children's book that I wrote. I have a, a prayer book that I've done. And then I have the latest book that I've done in 2017. It's called The Miracle and the Message, uh, 100 Years of Fatima. It was an Amazon bestseller when it came out. And every once in a while, when you look at these special days, like October 13th or May 13th, yeah, it's just it yesterday, October yeah. 13th. If we were put into a very dark room, if our senses were all 